Hello Mamati Baboon, I hope you are all doing well and we are back in our Grim Dawn walkthrough. Today it's going to be very simple, we want to do all the Burridge area and along the way we are going to work on a few quests. The first one being the Inventor's Apprentice and for the second, if you remember, we just became friendly with Devil's Crossing and if we go talk to Constance, she's going to give us a new quest. You see, I was a seamstress before the Grim Dawn. Nothing special, made just enough to get by. But now I see an opportunity to use my trade to make a difference around here. I would like to see you some new canopies. And maybe some new clothes if there is enough fabric left. Alex and Jane deserves better than this. Alright, we are going to help you, Constance. So we now have the seamstress quest. And we are going to go back to the Burwich Reef Gate and advance toward the abandoned waterfront, as this is where we are going to get the fabrics required to complete the quest. Let's go directly west. We just get this crystal here. We turn left. And we arrive on the abandoned waterfront. Oh, and on the way, I nearly forgot that there is a festering layer here. So let's go inside. This is not something that I usually do in my runs because there is not a lot of interest in here. We again have a swift mutator that should not be a problem for us to have faster enemies. That will just make them come and smell faster in our ravenous hearth. Same with the putrid den in the old dump. Do not stay in the water. It's going to inflict damage. And at the north of the lair, we will have Grand Lepith, the Hoarded. We need to be careful about him, he can deal a lot of acid and poison damage. You can see our health bar is not keeping up, I may need to use a potion. Okay, we did not have to. We get the Grundle Plith Tail, that's not a bad one for us. The Vitality damage increase is nice. It's not going to be a game changer, but I think I'm going to use it. We also get the Zeloth Gauntlets, and in my view this is trash. I don't remember using this item ever. Don't forget that Grand Lepleth was not called the Hoarder for nothing, so don't forget the monsters hoard here. Let's take everything. We got Blood Seal, but that's going to be useless for us. It's mainly for bleeding builds. Let's get out of here and let's go back to the abandoned waterfront. Here, in this area, there is going to be three chests with fabric inside. They are marked on the minimap, so it's going to be super easy to find them. Let's also deal with the friendly autochtones here. We take the second one here. And the last fabric is going to be here. We will go back to Devil's Crossing later to get the reward. While we are here, let's level up. We have unlocked Decay and that's going to be a nice damage boost for a Ravenous Earth. And the icing on the cake is that it's going to give Ravenous Earth the ability to reduce damage that enemies do. We climb the stairs and we get this note here. Oh, and by the way, I could have unlocked Siphon Source here. It is also a good ability for our build that does an AoE of Vitality damage center around our character and also vampirize health from enemies. I think I'm going to unlock it very soon. Here we have another totem. Let's take care of it. Two bosses, that should be fine. And we get Marrow Band. A good ring for a Necromancer, but unfortunately not for our build. Maroband is for a pet build. Well, unlucky, what can you do? Let's take all the rest and let's see. Nothing interesting. All crap. Wait a moment. This belt is actually good. With 25% of combined resistance, I'm going to equip it 
And we have another mutagenic icon, so I'm going to place it into the off end directly. And let's go back to Burwich. There are two ways in and out of the Abaddon waterfront. There is the one south that we took, and there is another north that we are going to take. As you can see on the minimap, your French baboon is going to go cleanse a desecrated shrine. This one is going to summon a few ethereal. Be careful because there is a chance that it spawns ethereal wraith, and this force can really deal a ton of ether damage. They could surprise you. Meanwhile, we are smiting all the enemies like there is no tomorrow, and we cleanse the shrine. This mental is of no interest for us. It's mainly for retaliation builds, and we are not going to use it. And now that we have cleansed the shrine, our next step is going to go into the Dank Cellar to free Kasparov's apprentice. She's going to be somewhere down here. And while we are here, there is going to be a breakable wall with the crops just after. Just here. And the crops will always contain a few green. And cool, we get our first ribbon. We do not care about the cold damage, but the spirit, energy, and ether resistance are most welcomed. Let's go this way, and the apprentice is going to be here. I can't believe somebody found me out here. I came down into this cellar looking for supplies, but got cut off from the surface. You can do that? I can't say that raises my confidence in you. And we are going to meet her back in Devil's Crossing. We are going to talk to her a little later. Meanwhile, we turn around and we are going to get out of here. And you know what? Something happened in my baboon brain and I changed my mind. Let's go back to Devil's Crossing. So Dalet the Apprentice is here. Thanks for the timely rescue. Kasparov spared no time in putting me back to work. So I'm here for all your schematic needs. And now we have unlocked a very important capability in the game. We can now salvage items and components. Let me demonstrate that to you. I am going to pick an item and a component that I do not really care about. For instance, a bristly fur and these boots. And now if I speak to Dalet, by paying 1110 and 1 iron bits, I can either destroy and remove the components from the boots by clicking on keep item, or I can destroy the item and keep the component by clicking on keep add-on. Here, for example, I want to keep the bristly fur and you see it destroyed the boots. There are two other capabilities, Dismantle and Transmute, but we are going to talk about them later, as uh, they are more a late game thing. But this salvage feature, it's really super duper useful, and we are often going to use it during all our playthrough. Because sometimes there are some rare components that we want to keep, while we don't really care about the item it is on, and sometimes there are items, epic or legendary one, that we want to keep, but change the component that is on them. While we are here, let's sell our crap. Oh, and I forgot that we can now equip the Grundle Plith Tail, and that's a typical use case of Dalet. We are going to take back the mutagenic icon from our old weapon and place it in our new one. Here we go. Now let's go talk to Constance to get the reward for the seamstress quest. Did you find some fabric? Great! This is more than enough to clean this place up a bit. Should also have some leftover to make some new clothes. Many people here are wearing nothing but rags. Oh, and please take this jacket. We get a nice jacket, but we cannot use it at the moment. We will need to be level 20. And now I'm going to go back to Burwich. We could teleport back to our personal rift gate and directly go to the Warden Cellar. But before that, I want to show you an optional area. And I got to tell you that for a very long time I was not aware of this area. I must have done dozens of playthroughs with different characters before I found it. So we are going to go north. And we are going to cross this bridge. And then... 
Uh, before we go there, let me show you there is one crazy guy that we can talk to. However, he's kind of crazy, so whatever you tell him, he's going to attack you. You broke my door. Oh no, the rotten walkers are going to hear you. They are going to find little walker and me. No, no, I cannot go. Nowhere is safe but here. I can't let you ruin this. Well, with a name like that, Harvey the Drifter, what did you expect? Now, the reason we came here is not to talk to this crazy man, but it is to go this way. And here, there is a secret passage that takes us to the river passage. We get a brutal modifier. That means that enemies will do less damage on average, but they will eat us more often and will do more critical damage. That should be okay, no worries. And we are going to cross this passage. Here we will meet some Slith and Beast. And we level up. Level 17. Let's add some more points into Spectral Binding. And I'm going to put a point into Siphon Souls. I'm going to put this new skill in my second skill slot. And you see, it just creates a siphon around our baboon. Really easy to use. I also add one point into Physic. And you can see, even with one point, it deals a good amount of damage. And let's continue our way. Let's go out of here and we will arrive on an island called the Allowed Hill. Here as usual there is going to be a ton of ethereal, but we come here mainly because we are going to find our first Exalted Stash. Exalted Stash are the best chests you can find in the game. They have at least one epic or legendary item guaranteed on each. And the main difference with other chests is that you can only open them once. Even if you quit and start the game again, they will remain open. In this area, there is three different places the Exalted Chest could spawn. We have already passed the first possible spawn around the big campfire. And here is a chest. Let's kill the boss and the enemies first. Ho oh ho. I don't think Malady is a good item for us. Yeah, that's a two-handed ranged weapon. And we are not going to use those kind of weapons because we want to keep an offhand at all time. But the interesting item is a Maven Lens Blueprint. We are not going to be able to craft this amulet, and although it's more an Arcanist item, the 12% of Chaos and Bleeding Resistance is tempting. Now let's open the Exalted Chest, and what do we get? Oh ho! The Tomb of Plague. More for an Occultist than for us, but it has a Vitality and Acid Damage boost that will work well with Ravenous Earth. We will see if we can get some use of it once we hit level 20. One thing to note about the Hallowed Hill is that in Elite and Ultimate difficulty, there is going to be a shrine here. Only normal difficulty does not have one. And that's why that in general I skip this area when playing in normal difficulty. Here there is a chance that there is a good chest, not an exact one, but a good chest around here. And with that, there is nothing else interesting here, so we are going to go back to Berwick. And same with our earlier run, we are going to take the same way north. And hey, wait a moment. Did I spend the Devotion Point from the Burry Shrine? Nope. So let's finish the Bat Constellation and we unlock Twin Fangs. We need to assign it to a skill and at the moment I'm going to assign it to Ravenous Hearth. When assigned to Ravenous Hearth, it has 38% chance to proc when we attack. And the nice thing about it is that not only it's going to deal vitality damage, but it is also going to heal us. As you can also see here, all the skills unlock with Devotion Points can level up and become beefier the more we use them. Let's cross the bridge again. But this time we are going to turn left and go past the house. Nope, it's blocked here. Let's try to find another way. And here we arrive where there was a shrine, but this time we turn right 
and enter the house of Warden Creek. Take your time in this house, we are not in a hurry, because there are a lot of enemies here and you do not want to be overwhelmed. In the room on the left we can find the Warden Creek Journal, and on the right we can find two new entries to the Journal of Inquisitor Creed. We go upstairs. Let's go back to take the note. And if we go into the backyard, we can enter the Warden Cellar. And that will be all for today. I would like to thank all the friendly baboons watching this episode. If you could add a like and subscribe that would be much appreciated and really help the channel grow. Next time we are going to go deep into the Warden Cellar and are going to chase Warden Creek and slay him. See ya!